By the first half of the 19th century, the British Empire had a very strong presence in Asia, specifically in the Indian subcontinent, via the East India Company, EIC. The British-born company, founded in 1600, was at the time the largest corporation in the world, accounting for almost half of the world's trade, even having its own 250,000-strong military. It was effectively ruling large parts of modern-day India, in the name of the British crown. Further east, the Qing ruled China was enjoying a trade surplus with Europe, exporting silk, tea and porcelain in exchange for silver. One banned yet very profitable commodity was Bengal opium. By 1833, over 2,000 metric tons of opium were covertly sold by Eek to private merchants per year. The merchants would then sell it on to Chinese smugglers. Opium recreational smoking skyrocketed in China and led to mass addiction and increased criminal activity. It has the same active ingredient, morphine, as heroin. One famous contributor to this statistic was Warren Delano Jr., grandfather of the 32nd U.S. President, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. China's crackdown on the use of opium clashed with Britain, which advocated for free trade as its merchants were the source of opium in China. As the Chinese administration started destroying opium stocks, traders demanded compensation from their home government. This put pressure on India from China as the overwhelming demand for opium was straining as the fixed supply simply no longer reached demands. In 1839, a small skirmish occurred between British and Chinese warships. However, British authorities believed that the Chinese were responsible for payment and sent expeditionary forces from India, which defeated the Qing army and navy in a series of battles and brought China to the negotiating table. The 1842 Treaty of Nanking not only opened the way for further opium trade, but ceded the territory of Hong Kong, unilaterally fixed a low rate for Chinese tariffs, gave Britain most favored nation status and permitted them diplomatic representation. $21 million in compensation for debts that the Canton merchants owed British merchants for the destroyed opium was also to be paid. This was the first of the unequal treaties of China's century of humiliation in regards to the Western powers. Despite the forcefully increased trade capacity, by 1854 Britain's imports from China had reached nine times their exports to the country. Meanwhile, British finances took a downturn from the expense of administering the burgeoning colonies of Hong Kong and Singapore. Only India's opium could balance the deficit. Along with various complaints about the treatment of British merchants in Chinese ports and the Qing government's refusal to accept further foreign ambassadors, the relatively minor Aero incident provided the pretext the British needed to expand their opium trade in China. The Aero was a merchant ship with an expired British registration that the Qing authorities seized for alleged salt smuggling. British authorities complained that the seizure breached the 1843 Treaty of the Boat with regard to extraterritoriality. Matters quickly escalated and led to the Second Opium War, sometimes referred to as the Arrow War or the Second Anglo-Chinese War, which broke out in 1856. A number of clashes followed until the war ended with the Treaty of Qingjing in 1860. Although the new treaty did not legalize opium per se, it opened a further five ports to trade and for the first time allowed foreign traders access to the vast hinterland of China beyond the coast. The story of opium in China runs very deep and touches on almost all societal aspects of the 19th century. The nation saga with the drug ends with Mao Zedong's communist government, who is generally credited for eradicating both its consumption and production during the 1950s. Thanks for watching Fast History.